Hi friends, uh, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how you can uh, mark the traffic which is entering the 40 gate unit using the field in the IP header, uh, TOS type of service or DSCP. So the DSCP field, uh, diff serve or differentiated service code bound point uh, earlier it was called TOS, but then it was entirely, uh, you know, um, redefined in the RFC 2474, and it is now called as TSCP. And by the way, this field is uh, six bit in size, and you know, altogether uh, the TOS field is eight bit, out of which the last two bit is used for ECN, explicit congestion notification to you know, uh, notify the communicating end that there is someone in transit who is experiencing the congestion. Um, well, that was the significance of the last two bits. And apart from the last two bits, the six bits before the last two bits are actually used for, uh, you know, DSCP marking. So which basically, uh, you know, tells us that you can only have uh, the decimal value from 0 to 63. So TSCP marking from 0 until 63 is possible. So uh, let's get started. Uh, on my screen, you can see PC1. This is a PC1 with the IP address 116 connected to 48 firewall on port 2108 and then the exit port is port 2 port 1 ingress port is port 2 egress port is port 1 and the pc will try to access 8.8.8 and our objective is to mark this traffic with tscp 10. let's get started so so this is the linux machine okay if i ping so i have the connectivity so you can see here the traffic from this IP, which is the Linux machine, PC1, is reaching the 40 gate firewall on port 2. And it is exiting out. via port one with the source IP as 192.168.0.108, which is the exit interface IP because I'm doing a NAT. So now let's take a capture and see what's going on. So I'm taking a capture on port one. So you can see here, the firewall is doing a NAT for uh, the IP, which is 14140.40.116, and it is translating this IP to 192.168.0.10H. And here, under the IP header, this is the feed here, DSCP, if so. And you can see here, there is no marking here, so it is CS0. And in the reply packet again, it is going to be zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark the traffic. So you will have to go to the policy.
you'll have to locate the policy which is actually allowing the traffic okay so you can see here the source pc1 destination 8.8.8 .8 .8. NAT is enabled. So here I'll have to set enable. So here you will have to mention the six bit binary value. The maximum could be 63 and the minimum is zero because the range is from zero to 63. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, you know, mark the traffic with the DSCP decimal value of 10, which is going to be 001010. So if you translate this binary into decimal, it is going to be 10. The configuration will look like this. And that's it, we are done. So make sure you don't have any session. Now I'm going to initiate the traffic. And let's get back to our capture. First of all, I'm going to show you if you take a capture on port two, which is receiving the traffic, you will not see the marking. So this is the traffic that you're receiving. So you can see here, there is no marking for the traffic received on the interface port two. And there is no marking for the reply packet that is getting out via this port two towards the PC one. So now I'm going to take a capture on port one to show you that the marking is going on for this particular traffic. So if you decapsulate the header IPv4, you can see here, this is the hex value zero cross 28, which translates to 10. You can see here, this was the binary value that I was talking about 001010, which translates to 10. 001010 which translates to 10 and if you see the reply packet coming from the internet towards the firewall we will not see this marking because there are multiple devices in transit which will then remove the dscp marking so this was all about the forward marking forward dscp marking so I'm going to show you the reverse uh, DSCP marking. So what basically it means is when PC1 initiates the traffic towards the internet 8.8.8, .8, you already saw the marking, DSCP marking of 10. So when there is a reply coming back from 8.8.8 .8 towards PC1, okay? If you take a capture on port two, the reply going towards PC1, you're going to see the DSCP marking of 10. If you take a capture on port 1, 
you will not see this TSCP marking because the device in transit from here to here will actually remove this TSCP marking to avoid any kind of, you know, unexpected behavior. Anyways, um, so the forward TSCP marking or diff serve, when you enable it on 40 gate firewall, the exit traffic, which is this one, will be marked with TSCP value 10. And when the reply comes to the firewall, when you take a capture on the firewall exit interface, which is going to be port two for the reply, you will see the DSCP marking of 10. Only if you have enabled the reverse or uh, dip serve marking. So let's try to do that. So right now you can clearly see that there is no DSCP marking here. It's completely zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reconfigure So you can see here, there's no reverse marking enabled. So I'm going to do reverse enable. Okay, diff serve code, sorry. Diff serve code reverse, and I'm going to uh, put the same value because I want the reply packet which is exiting the port two towards the PC one to be marked with DSCP value 10. Um, the reply packet from the internet towards the port one will not be marked. The traffic exiting the firewall, the reply packet port two towards port PC one will only be marked. So you will have to uh, note this thing. Reverse marking does not mean that the reply packet from the internet towards the firewall will be marked. It is basically the traffic that is exiting out from the firewall, the reverse traffic, the reply packet. So I'm going to mark it as same. Configuration will look like this. So we'll have to stop this and then we'll have to see if there is any existing session. Otherwise you will not be able to, you know, see the marking. If there is a session, then you'll have to remove the session, flush the session. So there's a session here. So you can see here there is a session. So we will have to remove the session. Okay, so we have cleared the session. Now we can initiate the traffic.
you can see here the translation and then we will try to see if there is any TCP marking going on for the reply packet. So this is taken on port one. So you will not see the reply packet having the TCP marking. So the forward marking is here, the value 10, which is in hex zero cross 28. If you see the reply packet, it is not having any marking. Let's try to edit this. Let's try to take it on port two, which is the exit in interface for the reply packet. Okay, so let's expand this. You can see here. The TSCP marking of 10. So this is the reverse uh, uh, traffic. So if you see the first packet, well, you will notice that there is no marking here because this interface is actually receiving it and marking happens after you receive the traffic on port two. So the forward marking will happen on, will happen after you receive the traffic on port two. So you will not see in the capture or if you want to see in the, in the capture, then you'll have to take a capture on port one. So the reverse traffic, this is the trap, which is exiting the firewall from port two will have marking of 10. So, and the hex value of zero cross 28. So uh, that's all in this video. So please do subscribe to my channel, hit the like button and stay tuned for more updates. Have a good day.